I am glad that there is a lady I know personally who's going to bless you. And if you are a woman pivoting, transitioning in the middle of some new moves, you will want to stay tuned. This is the Intensified Life TV with Dr. Lakeisha B. I am talking about my dear sister in Christ, the one and only, the Reverend Deborah Bell. She's with us today on Intensified Life TV. Hey there, lady. I want you to give everybody a shout out. How are you? Hello, hello, hello. I am doing great. Dr. Lakeisha B, how are you? <laughs> I am doing well. We have not seen each other, of course, personally, like in the flesh. Of course, we've lost two years with this pandemic, but I'm so grateful that you put aside some time to be with us tonight. I've got a lot of questions because you have been a lady on the move. We've not talked in a long time, but I've been watching you on social media and you have been doing some things. You know what? God is so faithful. He continues to open doors and I keep walking through. <laughs> Keep walking, sis. You know, that, that actually is a word I'm sure somebody could be encouraged by because sometimes we get a little intimidated by the doors that are opening or we feel like we are not uh, competent enough to move forward or we just kind of get stuck. We actually have a series about getting unstuck. So let me just put a plug in. If you didn't see that series, you need to go back and check it out on this Intensified Life TV channel, all right? But let's move on. Reverend Deborah, give me a little bit about how you are a history maker. I know just a wee bit of the story, but I think some other folks would be encouraged to hear how you made history in one of Houston's mega churches. Tell us your story. So it was um, my blessing to be a part of the Church Without Walls from inception. And my pastor always was open to the gifts that God had given me. And I realized that he would jokingly say to me, <laughs> you're nothing but a little jack leg preacher. And we would have a good laugh, you know, and I'd go about my business. But um, as God began to really deal with me on the call to preach and to, the call to ministry, um, I remember avoiding him because I did not want him to see what I knew God was doing because he had that kind of intuition. Wow. And early in the life of the church without walls back then, we were Brook Hollow Baptist Church. I remember. Uh, I remember sitting upstairs at our bingo location, working on a paper and he found me. My pastor found me. He said, look, what's going on with you? I'm like, ah, nothing. And he kept pressing the issue and, and I began to cry. I, I never will forget this day. And I said to him through my tears, I've been called to preach. He said, girl, everybody knows that. <laughs> we already knew that. You're the only one who didn't know. And he allowed me the opportunity to ask my questions, to even challenge what I thought I was feeling. And I remember starting the sentence, if I, and he would not let me finish. He said, if you do not do this, you will be most miserable. And maybe two months later, I announced my call to our church and was allowed to preach my first sermon and was licensed as the first female preacher at the church without walls yes in 1991 yeah. no 91 and march awesome. is actually my preaching anniversary yes <laughs> woo -hoo, woo -hoo. congratulations happy anniversary thank you so much thank you awesome so much. awesome and let's give a shout out to the reverend dr ralph West for being so affirming, supportive, opening that space for you to be comfortable and received. God bless you, sir. And to all of the Absolutely. other women who come behind you now, we know some of them. God bless you. Now. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I often have the opportunity to say thank you to him because he made this journey for me such an amazing journey filled with so much opportunity. Oh, that is so important. I 
I'll have to do another series, another show, another another uh, podcast one day to talk with men who've made that transition, who've been supportive. As much as I rally behind and try my best to empower women, I always try also to make sure we acknowledge our brothers who are helping to pave the way, who are helping to knock down some of those obstacles and open doors because it is needed. We, we definitely support each other as sisters, but we need each other. Men and women are doing this thing. God called both and we have to do it together. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and might I say, it came at a price for him to allow me oh. to do what he recognized God was calling me to do. Because back in 1991, he was preaching at places that didn't allow women in the pulpit. And some of those places refused to have him come and preach because he allowed a woman in his pulpit and licensed a woman. But whenever I ask him about it, he's so gracious. His response is, because I'm getting mad, right? I'm like, why they ain't here? You know, and his response to me is, Deb, they just didn't understand. Wow. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Wow. And I just can amazed. That. Yeah, that's major. Yeah. And, and I appreciate that you acknowledge it because so many times I'm certain that there are people, men and women, who make great sacrifices for others. And we don't know the story behind all that they go through to do what they do when we talk Absolutely. about trailblazers and those who open doors and create opportunities and make space and room as we talk about you know get a seat at the table or make room at the table some people actually do make room and try to create space for you and it comes at a price it comes at a high it cost absolutely does and, and listen, it absolutely yeah. does and and he sent me places I mean, he would go before and I could hear him, man, I got this girl at my church and man, she can, she can say that word, she can bring it. And they would invite me to, to preach. And when I come back home, he'd be like, how'd it go? And I remember this one incident, it didn't go so well. I didn't feel like it went so well. He said, well, what happened? <laughs> I felt like a daughter coming back to her daddy going, daddy, I messed up. But then that church invited me, that pastor invited me again. And let me tell you something, the Lord showed up. But there were just so many opportunities that I had because of him. And I am forever grateful. That is extraordinary, I believe. Um, I, know some, I know some pastors and I don't know too many that I've heard that actually send you and actually do that kind of uh, cheerleading and and, and um, endorsement is, is such a strong space and in place. That's amazing to me. Um, I almost got a little emotional. I, I have to be honest, as I was listening, I was thinking that is so necessary. And, and if truth be told, let's just be honest. When you were talking about the fact that other pastors and leaders would stop inviting him, that means that he was missing some money. Like this is a man Absolutely with a wife right. and children. Yeah, and in those days, our church was young. Yeah, and that's so amazing. that 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 meant a whole lot for him to take the stand that he took, not just in my behalf, because I remember asking him at our 30th anniversary, I'm like, Paz, did you know that there would be this many women who would come mm -hmm. after me that you would shepherd? And at our church, 85% of our preachers are female. And he takes his role in their, their ministry very seriously. And he's very protective of us. So I'm getting a little teary out. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. I think it is an amazing um, example. I, I pray that somebody is encouraged by this, just so that you know that it's not all difficult everywhere. There are some pastors who truly uh, shepherd and want to father and nurture and mentor and be totally supportive. And, and even when it comes at a price, I think that that yes. speaks to his, his, his full commitment to the kingdom. That, that, that speaks to his full commitment to making sure that God is God and not our perception or uh, tradition or our erroneous teachings yes. about God, that God is given all the authority and sovereignty to do what God wants to do and to encourage however that may be expressed. It is so liberating and beautiful. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know all of that. I didn't, I did not know you were going to come with all that. I would have had my tissue yeah. nearby because you're about to make me miss it on that chair. Yeah, it, it, it really was an amazing experience. And then to, to have that 
in my early days and then to still share in ministry there now, yes. it, it is just like, again, amazing. It's it an is. amazing journey. It's amazing. Woo, so take us through the last 30 years. That's, that's 30, yeah, that's 30, 30, 31. This year makes 31 years. So tell us a little bit about, uh, and I know you've been doing a lot, but talk to us about what it means to be in that seat and how has your position as the eldest daughter of the ministry, I'll call you that, you know, you big sis to everybody, I'm sure. So as the eldest daughter of the ministry and then being able to see the progress in many other places, not just in Houston, but nationally even, Tell us what has it been like for you to watch the development of women in ministry at your home church and in other spaces as you've grown? You know what? It has been um, absolutely my greatest joy mm -hmm. to see how God has expanded from me being the only female preacher to now 85% of the 150 preachers being women at the church without walls. Um, I have the, the, the blessed pleasure in my role now, uh, as I oversee our, our preacher's ministry to assist in preachers preparing for their first sermons. And in that role, really being able to be very candid, but really focus preachers on their preparation uh, structure uh, and making sure that they're speaking what they hear God saying and not just coming off the top of their heads. Amen. Um, and so before they speak before the congregation, they sit before a panel where they have to deliver their message, the same message they're going to deliver wow. and get feedback. And so I take that role seriously and it is not necessarily an easy role because sometimes you have to have hard conversations. I'm sure. But I think that in this era, it is so vital that the message of the Bible be interpreted in a way where God continues to get the glory and Jesus is still the center of uh, the center attraction. And so your testimony is not a sermon. Wow. Reverend. Talking about your kids is not a sermon. Reverend. Anything outside of your looking into the book and exegeting that word will not qualify if <laughs> you're standing on that pulpit. So uh, again, sometimes it's hard conversations, but I think that the word has such power uh, that if you sit in the presence of the Lord long enough, you'll come away with a relevant word for the people of God. And so I think that's vital. I We're totally seeing agree. so many different things that are that's called preaching right now. <laughs> I totally agree with you. You know, and uh, we have such a relevant example in our pastor who is identified as one of the 12 best preachers in the world. Uh, so um, there's no way that I can allow somebody who, who hasn't spent time in the presence uh, and who does not have the structure to stay in. I can't do it, can't do it. Can't I love it. it. I love so it. So I take that role really, really seriously. I uh, love so, it. So again, looking at what we see, especially with female preachers, uh, I'm gonna hang my hat right there for a minute. It, it, it causes great concern to me um, when there is so much identified as preaching that doesn't measure up. And when I say measure up, I don't mean that you have to come with, uh, with a doctorate degree to preach, but you have to come with a word that's been bathed in the Holy Ghost and where God has 
you spend time in his presence to hear. Uh, Girl, you use the King the James. The you went King James on me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> with the Holy Ghost. Yes, ma'am. You know, I'm old school. You know, I'm a little girl from Greenville, Mississippi, uh, who grew up in a small church with those wood floors with the mother sitting over yes. on the side. And our pastor uh, used his manuscript when he preached. But then he put that aside and go on in in that home <laughs> and who, you know, so I grew up with that. And it's a part of me, even in my preaching, I'm pretty passionate in, in, in preaching. And, and I don't expect that everybody would be there. And I, I appreciate our pastor because he encourages us, use your voice, allow right. God to use who you are. Be authentic. Preach from that. Preach from that. So, uh, but I think that we're in a time when people have itching ears and they will listen to anything and claim it to be preaching. But wow. you got to write and divide the word. This is good. And I, I so appreciate your commitment um, to be very faithful. And it's like, I, I sense, I know you in this way, but I, as hearing you talk like this, I, it reminds me of that steadfast, unmovable, um, always abounding in the work of the Lord, but also steadfast in the truth of what God's word is and the power of what that word can do, which mm. is why it is, it is not to be taken lightly this great blessing and burden of carrying the yes. gospel of, of preaching the message and I so appreciate that you've you've been around long enough in your own personal ministry but then like you said you are exposed to fabulous phenomenal preaching all the time I know yes. um, not only of your pastor but then of the guests that he brings in you know you all yes. don't get like cheese and crackers on the side <laughs> when he's not away so that's a blessing and so being exposed to all of that only fortifies what god had already put in you and that's amazing i am grateful i am grateful that you are so you are the trailblazer that you are the big sister that you are now the mentor to others coming behind uh learning how to craft sermons learning how to hopefully uh you know how they say more is caught than taught so hopefully many of them are catching that sincerity and that passion and that commitment from you uh, while they're preparing, and then they'll carry that on to another generation of preachers. But I'm also watching you as a woman who has transitioned and who has learned how to pivot in this new era, as you call it. And I use that term as well, because we are living in some interesting times. Um, tell me a little bit about how God has led you to make some shifts and adjustments, and maybe even see ministry in a broader scope than when you first started. That is a really uh, interesting question. This journey, um, I'll call it beyond the pulpit, has taken me um, just places I never thought I'd go. Um, during the pandemic, one of the things that happened for me, and you talked about pivoting, is I started a podcast. It's Real Life Podcast. And uh, my podcast partner, who had been a member of the Church Without Walls, uh, we just had such similar focus and we both were both preachers, but our perspective was people can hear the word of God, even when you're not holding the Bible. And they can still understand and feel the impact of the spirit of God working through us. And so we took on topics that people deal with in real life. One of our first and probably our biggest uh, podcasts was on being vulnerable in relationships and dealing with um, just how people have so many um, mental, emotional issues that they bring into relationships and how do you work through those things? We had a psychologist on um, and a family life specialist to talk with us about relationships and being vulnerable in relationships and dealing with um, uh, emotional, mental kind of issues. Uh, and it, again, it was a great conversation. So that was one of the things that happened beyond the pulpit as I pivoted. Uh, and I look, to con look forward to continuing the podcast. Um, there has been a, a discovery journal 
I've worked with women over 50. Uh, the, the group is called Powerful Over 50, P-O-W-H-E-R-F-U-L, uh, to help people under, women understand that life doesn't end once you turn 50. And even if you haven't reached the pinnacle, if you haven't accomplished the purpose and the goal, you still have opportunity to do it. God can use you. And so um, it was a, a mentoring group that I started um, just to encourage sisters to know you can still do the thing God has called you to do. In fact, everything that you've been through has been purposed to move you toward that thing he's calling you to. And, and that has been a, a wonderful experience um, seeing women who had books that they were that were just sitting there that they'd never published. And wow. one of the women in the group published three books in the same month <laughs> because you know, they were that, just sitting there. That, that reminds me again of Unstuck and sometimes how we need that extra support and affirmation yes. and sometimes even a roadmap, you know, and strategy yes. to help us get to those baby steps. I always say baby steps can get you somewhere. Sometimes you just oh, need yes, to take those can. little baby steps. You'll get somewhere if you take those baby steps. Those are amazing transitions. And I like how you call it beyond the pulpit because many times women who are called to ministry believe that is the beginning and the stopping point. That is the place, the only place. Or unfortunately, some have even placed it as the best place. Like we have this hierarchical kind of grading scale where you're not in real ministry unless you're in a church or behind a particular type of a pulpit desk or what have you. And I think that what you've described really helps us to appreciate all the ways that God can use us. I mean, there's so many more, so many more. I, I We encounter, I encounter women just doing things just kind of outside of the box. And I'm so excited to see just how God can use people when they listen and they're creative and they use what he's given to them. I have a, a group of young women that I've mentored over the years and one of them is a youth pastor in Virginia at a hundred year old church. Uh, part of her journey included being an elder at the Potter's house and taking that back into a traditional church. But along with that, she's been a teacher, she's been a writer, and God is now using everything that he's given her in the position that she's in. And just seeing how she's been creative during the pandemic to just create ministry on the screen for her, her kids. Yeah, the youth and, and uh, uh, children. It, yeah. it has just been amazing watching how God is working. And I, I just jump in. I'm like, I want to be a part of that, Lord. You know, where, <laughs> where else can you use me? What else you want to do? You know, I, I'm ready I, to do it. I think that what you've said has, has really made me think about the need for more of those big sister, mothering, mentoring women who first of all, are not intimidated by the next generation and all their creativity and what they bring to the ministry or the table. Um, and it also makes me think about the ways that we can really support one another uh, and be that catalyst or that help to get you out of that stuck place, to get you unstuck and to give you um, maybe just a glimpse of the possibilities. Because many times we always cheer others on and we are not as readily able or we don't see it for ourselves all the time. And that's why a good tribe, a good crew, a good connection really is so important, so important. You have done something special and I want you to talk about it since you brought up mentoring and all of that. I know that you're certified as a coach, as a teacher um, with a very, very reputable <laughs> um, institution, I would say, a name that is known around, or I guess I could say around the world as it relates to leadership and coaching and mentoring. Tell us a little bit how you got into it and then describe for us what that is. So I remember in the early days of our church, our pastor brought John Maxwell in to do some training with our leaders. I mean, our church was still very young in those days. And I was just so impressed with his one foot in the church and one foot in corporate. Yes. And that was the thing that drew me because I think the message of Christ 
can, of course goes beyond the walls, but it can go into corporate environments as well and make changes there. So uh, that was my draw to John Maxwell. When he started his coaching organization, uh, John Maxwell Team, I was in a part of the first group of people who were trained and certified as coach, teacher, trainer. And that was in 2010. And because of that, I'm not grandfathered into everything that they produce. And it's so much, so much information, but it has been such a blessing uh, to, to carry that certification um, to kind of find grounding for the work that I do as I coach um, and teach and train. Uh, awesome. the, the certification has just been, oh, the, the information has been just priceless yeah. and has helped me as I've reached out to people. And now I'm doing another little pivot and adding health and wellness coaching to that uh, as I work at Baylor in the medical center uh, at a clinic as a health and wellness coach. And hopefully we'll have my certification, the national certification for health and wellness coaching. You uh, by keep the end of doing the year. things. You keep <laughs> adding to it. I didn't know that. I congratulations. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. um yeah, back in 2010, I did the John Maxwell certification, but I also graduated from Houston Graduate School of Theology with my MD. Well, I worked at Houston Baptist University. And so in 2019, I graduated with a master's in entrepreneurship and management. Uh, I'm a forever learner. Forever, so, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 I thought that it would help as I'm branching out into business and building a brand. And yeah, so um, that, that kind of explained that move, but it was a one-year degree. I'm like, you can do anything in a year. Yeah. And uh, just really excited about that. Um, us, tell us if, if anyone is interested in either one of those certification programs, tell us where we should go to look for that information, because there may be someone watching, you know, now or days later, years later, maybe. But um, these are the kinds of things that people have an interest in, but maybe they don't know exactly where to start. And let me just say, if anybody is watching, you are hearing it from someone that I totally trust. These are reputable uh, organizations, institutions. So Reverend, tell us where, where can we find more information about those? So you can go to John Maxwell Group, um, dot com, and you'll find information about the uh, certification coach, teacher, trainer certification. Uh, it is an amazing six month training program virtually with uh, what they've just started back doing a three day on site in uh, Florida. A beautiful uh, surroundings for a three-day certification process. And you're there with people from all over the country. I have friends in England and in South Africa because of that certification. Uh, the other organization um, that I mentioned at HBU, the, the master's program, it's a one year, now it's online, master's degree in management and entrepreneurship. You can go to the HBU website and find that degree if you're interested in broadening uh, your experience as an entrepreneur. Yeah, um, you. I know you're familiar with Ambassador Sujay. Um, yes. Dr. Yeah, I like that she has uh, launched into something similar with creation of the Global Black Women's Chamber of Commerce. And she has a number of members. I am one. Uh, we will call faithpreneurs. And there are so mm -hmm. many women who are balancing or blending um, ministry, you know, nonprofit organization and entrepreneurship. And what you just described sounds like something that could be very helpful, especially since the pandemic put all of us in a new space to be more creative, to think about multiple streams of income at, a, at another level. We were already thinking about it, talking about right. it, but when you had so many things to shut down and you needed to still pay your bills, and then you had some time to just process and think about, well, what is what is God saying? What is God doing? And, and what can I do with my time? And, and how can I make the most of this? This is, this is a good season to look into those things. You are absolutely right, because as I mentioned, the podcast happened during the pandemic. Uh, I authored my first book, which is my discovery journal during the pandemic, and now just completed a uh, book collaboration with nine other 
female entrepreneurs and professional women. Will, um, I, I kind of uh, built out my website during the pandemic, P3 Coaching and Consulting. You can go to ask p3coaching.org and find both of the books and other information about what I do. Uh, but God never stopped during the pandemic. I agree. I agree. I mean, the never world stopped. was put in time out, but I think we needed it so that a lot of yeah. the things that you, like you just described could be unearthed so we could yes. get back to a center and, and first of all, rest. Let me just say that. First of all, rest, <laughs> sit down somewhere, be still for a minute, <laughs> rest, but then also get to digging into and, and getting more in touch with what we've always had deep down, those dreams and things that we probably were too busy hustling and bustling, being driven, you know, grinding in all of these other spaces uh, when God gave us something to nurture. And I, I really applaud you again. Congratulations on the book, the launch and everything you are doing. You are such, you are so the example of what I feel that women, especially women in ministry, now all women across the board, but sometimes I believe that as preachers and women in ministry, we get kind of stuck in a box or we, we, we fearful even of answering the call because of what we believe the box may try to hold us into. And there's no problem with you doing everything. You may not be able to do it all in the same day, but you can through your life's journey by leading of the Holy Spirit and just walking with God, you can work out all that God has in you to work out and release it. So glad to hear you say that because my friends would often say to me, why do you have to do everything? God gives the capacity for that. Yes. Everybody doesn't have it. And I had to understand that and be okay that they felt like I was all over the place, but I was doing what God had called me to do and what he purposed me to do. So all of the places where my hands have touched are places where I know for sure that God uh, had led me. Uh, I remember reading, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sing by Maya Angelou. And one of the things I was so captivated by was her ability to cross so many different aspects of life. She was a dancer. She was a singer. She became a writer. She was an actress. And I'm like, Lord, I want to be able to do those things. She was a political activist. I mean, so I saw that and it just touched something in me to say, you know what? You don't have to be just one thing. God has given you the capacity to do different things. And I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm good with it too. I, I, I can I identify with that. <laughs> and, and the reason why I was, it was so easy for me to say it because I've often thought to myself, well, you know, maybe I should just focus on one thing. But, but the truth is, I don't think there are certain people, there are certain makeups you just certain folks just wired like this and you really aren't fulfilled unless you are expressing all that God has given you and trying it out those adventurous folks who just why not you know why not you only live once and as long as my opinion is this as long as it really is in obedience to God you're seeking God and being led by God I really don't think we should limit ourselves and I hope that someone really hears this because Listen, sis, you may be the one, and I, I hope I'm talking to somebody. If you identify with this, you need to put a comment in the comment section. You may be one of those, like us, who, you know, you can do this, you can do that. And it's not just that you can do it, but there is a real passion. There is something inside of you that says, this needs to happen in my life. I need to be obedient. There's a call. There's a sense of, of just divine placement of yeah. that particular move in your life. And I wanna just say to you, why not? Go ahead, follow God in it. Um, it may not all happen on the same day at the same time, but it doesn't mean that through your life's journey, you won't get to taste all of those pieces. And listen, you'll taste and see that God is good. You'll, you'll get the best of the fullness of life that God created you to have. And don't shrink back. So often we try to minimize ourselves because not too many others in our circle understand all this stuff you have going on, but don't shrink back. You've got sisters right here who can testify. You'll be happy that you released it all and just follow God in obedience. And Woo. the key is it might not all happen on the same day. Yes. Follow God because he opens certain doors at certain times. Yes. He, 
you bring certain opportunities and certain people during certain seasons. And when you follow after him, you won't miss it. Yes. And it will flow. There will be an ebb and flow in, of your life and you will feel it. It won't be overwhelming. And the times when you are overwhelmed, you know to run to daddy God and, and just lay out in his presence so he can restore you and redirect you. Um, I, I love that you said that it will not happen all in the same day, but know that there's a season and a time where he'll lead and guide and open doors of opportunity for all of it. Amen. And so this reminds me of also what we said before, which is then you have to also learn how to move with God and pivot. Know when it's time to make that adjustment and that shift. And it doesn't mean that anything um, is wrong you know, with following the Lord. There's a scripture uh, in Numbers, and I'll, I'll trust that some of you will go look it up because it's very, very significant. When Moses was leading uh, Israel out of Egyptian bondage through the wilderness, and this is the scene where they are following the cloud, the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And sometimes they would camp for just a few days, and then the cloud would move, and they have to get up and move on. <laughs> and sometimes they stay for months. But the point is, whether it was for a few days or a few months, they follow the cloud. And sometimes we want to park and stay longer than God is saying stay. And sometimes we want to move on faster than God is saying move on. But as long as you're following, you know, staying in step with the spirit, this is good stuff, sis. I so appreciate your can I, life. Can I just tag on something right there? Oh, please, of just, course. So, so with that ebb and flow and the following after God, I remember there were three years in a row. I, I remember sitting in my car and saying to God, there has to be more than this. I want to be able to do these things. And the Lord, and I say, I asked the Lord, I want to preach at least twice a month, um, to just opportunities at least twice a month. He did that every month, almost that year. The next year I prayed, Lord, I want to speak preach at least three times some type of engagement where I'm delivering the word or Bible study. He did that with the exception of one month where I was preparing for a retreat. That's another thing that I did during this time, women's retreats. And, um, and, and he answered that, but then he switched it up because I got tired. <laughs> <laughs> and so when he switched it, I had to pay attention. So where he was going next, and as I did, powerful came about, the podcast came about, the book came about. I mean, so paying attention and following after him, it, it really does pay off, and it leads to such fulfillment yes. in your life. Yes, 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 yes. This is good. You, you are like the poster child for everything that I was hoping uh, we would established when her call ministries was established more than 10 years ago. So uh, we had a wonderful conversation with the other founding uh, board members of that organization. And you are also one. So you just led me right into a space that I wanted to just give you a moment to reflect on that and share anything that you might want to share. What's your fondest memory? Um, how do you see her call satisfying a need back then? And, and um, just anything that comes to mind. You know what, my fondest memory about her call was the inception. I remember being in Atlanta with a group of women preachers and you raised this idea that you allowed us to kind of just talk and explore. Uh, and then we came back to Houston and before you know it, we were working on that thing. But that conversation in Atlanta was amazing and then to see what was birthed uh through your vision after that 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 was like wow god yeah um over the years her call had such great opportunity to not just pour into the lives of women uh preachers but to train and develop to honor those who were trailblazers who had been out in the field preaching and teaching even before we were even thought about right. the call of God, <laughs> you know, and um, to honor those women, uh, to allow us to see that we're not the only ones, we're not the first ones, uh, was, was another just great uh, um, uh, outpour of the work that was done through her call. 
Um, and then the, the conferences. Yeah, those, yeah. those were just Good, good days. So it's a part of our history is a part of what I think will uh, like bind us together forever. Uh, as we said in the conversation, there's so many women we know today who are doing great things in ministry that pass through her call ministries, events, conferences, trainings, whatever it may have been at the time. And it was for a season. It was for a short season. We'll see what the Lord says uh, moving forward. I always say her call ministries just kind of went to sleep. And at the time, and I, and I gave the other ladies an opportunity to speak on this, at the time that her call was conceived and, and birthed and moved forward, I personally didn't know of any other organization or ministry doing that type of work for women in ministry. Um, we knew of a lot of women's conferences that were dynamic, but something that was very tailored and specific in this area. Of course, we knew the conference in Atlanta and um, Ambassador Sujay doing some things, but in this region, did you know of anything like her call? At, at that time? time, absolutely did not uh, know of anything. You know, I'm a part of the Texas Baptist Women in Ministry on the board of that organization. And even the work that is done there is, is not as broad as the work that was being done at Her Call Ministries. Yeah, and I think it came that the organization for Texas Baptist Women may have been a couple of years later. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, we didn't know anything at the time. And now there are many other opportunities, which I, I applaud and thank God for, but I believe that what we, what, what we were blessed to hold and steward for a short time was needed and was a blessing. And I thank you. I did thank the others, but I must thank you also for being such a profoundly awesome, great, phenomenal support and encourager, uh, not only of your time, but of your talent and your treasure. Uh, you supported in in big ways, and that's why I just I just celebrate all that you have exemplified, especially over these last ten years. You are a lady that will not sit and let grass grow under your feet. You <laughs> are gonna keep it moving, and I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. I really appreciate that. I really do. I don't know how to stop. I have slowed down. One of the things I told God this year was I, I, I want to be more centered and focused in the things that I put my hands to so that I have personal time. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and that has made a difference. I haven't done anything, well, much this first quarter and on purpose. I think there are times when we need to pull aside and listen and hear uh, and rest, as you said earlier. Amen. Uh, and that's been what I've been doing. Uh, but now I'm getting a little anxious and I'm like, ready? <laughs> I'm like, okay, God, is the time yet? Is the time? Can we go? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm it. ready. I'm I love ready. it. Well, I appreciate this time with me. I think we've covered so many things and somebody may want to follow up with you again because you are, like we said before, you are a coach, teacher, mentor, all of that, preacher for sure. And if somebody wants to reach out for you for any of those things or just to dig a little deeper into your story because it's so inspiring, especially for women who are maybe in their second part of life and be it a career, a third or fourth career, somebody transitioning, pivoting uh, in ministry or trying to balance and blend their corporate life or their other life and ministry. There's no need to feel like you have to dump everything. Uh, God may have you to be one like Deborah, like myself. You just kind of mix a few things up and just follow God. But if you need to talk to somebody, Reverend, how can they reach you? So uh, you can absolutely find me through my website, www.ask3coaching.org. Uh, A-S-K, the letter P, the number three, coaching.org. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, Deborah F. Bell. I have a business page on Facebook, P3 Coaching, uh, Deborah F. Bell. So those are ways that you can find me. Uh, and I would love to correspond uh, and share and talk and uh, whatever you, you, you would need as, as it relates to coaching. Awesome. I've thought about contacting you myself too. Sometimes, you know, just, you got, I have just so much in here. You know, you got to talk it out and get it out. <laughs> but also 
because you gave such an example. I do want to re I want to emphasize and, and reiterate that some of you watching may feel stuck. You may feel like you're in a space where you need to just press forward, but you need strategy. Maybe it's the coaching and the mentoring, the baby steps, just plot out a little bit of a plan, un unclog, <laughs> unravel maybe some of the things that are all tied up in you so that you can get direction and focus. And I believe that Deborah would be a great, great resource for you. Uh, right. Not only because of what she's, she's lived in her own journey, but because she's been trained by some experts. Um, if you don't know John Maxwell, just go Google, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. Just a name that is known everywhere for some great leadership tools and, and respected by some of the best. Um, and then just for her heart and that sensitivity and that warmth and that authenticity, all that you saw here is always Reverend Deborah Bell, okay? <laughs> it's just, just always the same. That that real passion and sincerity and genuine uh, gentleness and, and humility. Uh, that's why I love her. And I, I really mean that. I very highly respect you, highly regard you. And I thank you so much for being such a great example as a trailblazer and a history maker here in the Houston area. And I just appreciate what God is doing in you because I want to be flying fabulous like you when I get older. And I'm not planning on slowing down either. You know, I'm gonna I'm try to follow the clouds, stick with the flow, the ebb and flow of the Lord, but you make it look good to continue to grow, you know, to grow it gracefully and, and, and keeping that freshness. You know, we, we can still be so relevant and meaningful. And so for, for women over 50, you have a journal and you've been mentoring them as well. So there's just no telling you, you don't stop. You just don't stop. <laughs> there are two more books coming. I'm really excited about those. One is a devotional kind of inspirational uh, book uh, from uh, first Peter. Uh, and then uh, more about change is necessary. So more to come, more to come. More to and come. Lakeisha, may I say, I am so very proud of you. I am so grateful to God for how you haven't sat still, for how you haven't stopped, for how you haven't allowed the things that happen around you to snuff out the passion and the power that you have. Uh, as you live out your faith and uh, love you, sis. And again, just proud, honey, just proud. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, big sis. I appreciate that. Listen, I am so grateful that Reverend Deborah Bell was able to be with us today. Um, it is a joy. Remember, you need to pick up her books. You need to visit her website. You might need to contact her and get the coaching you need because I believe that she's one who is living what she's preaching teaching what she's coaching you about. You can hear it in her journey, her story. Uh, she has a lot to draw from and she's rooted in the word. She's grounded in a good community of faith. She's had great leadership, great training. And I just believe that everything that God has blessed her with in her life can be a blessing to you. So why don't you go ahead and reach out to her? And then as well, remember, that there is a series called Unstuck, okay? Go back, check it out. Some of you might be stuck. And I just wanna say to you that there is no limit to what God can do. When you get with the right connections, maybe you need a little strategy. Maybe it's just a bit of encouragement, a listening ear, and just a little direction to take those baby steps. Those baby steps will get you somewhere. Okay, don't be afraid, don't be intimidated. Reach out and ask for the support you need. And I'm praying that these series and this podcast and everything that I'm sharing will be a part of that, getting you on the path to living the intensified life. That's what it's all about, experiencing God and living to tell about it. Well, until next time, thank you so much. Remember to subscribe, share, like, make sure that you visit us and stay tuned for the next opportunity to grow in God. This is the Intensified Life TV with Dr. Lakeisha B.